Testing the failure cases of code is often as important as testing the successful paths. The Pandoc filter we worked on in the previous episode returns its result and throws exceptions with formatted strings in the IO type. This makes testing the failure cases much harder. In this episode, we will introduce a function exposing the errors using the either type and rewrite the test suite to match the new behavior. In the last episode, we introduced the inclusion mode data type, making valid modes of execution explicit. Our test suite still needs some changes though, to reflect how you cannot run the filter in multiple modes simultaneously. Switching over to the test runner, we see that two cases fail. These cases were previously valid, but now we want to instead assert that they fail. Looking at the test suite, we see that the test cases use a function include code that returns an IO action of a code block. Failures in include code are thrown as exceptions in the IO action with formatted strings for error messages. Testing directly against the formatted messages would be brittle, so we'll instead provide an alternative function to include code that returns IO of either inclusion error or block. The maybe format passed by Pandoc's filter mechanism to include code is not used, so we won't pass it to our new function. The existing function will use include code prime and convert the either value to an IO action, throwing exceptions just as before. The Kleisley arrow is used to compose two monadic actions, analogous to the operator for function composition. Now, let's get those exceptions out of include code prime. When we have a valid block to return, we do that using the right constructor. Errors are returned by wrapping them in a left. The case where we actually include code in the block will no longer use run inclusion prime, as we want the accept t from the regular run inclusion function. Thus, we remove run inclusion prime and use run accept t directly. We'll also have to use run reader t with the inclusion spec value and bind the resulting contents. I like using accept t in this local style, not exposing it to the caller, but making error handling inside the function body easier to manage. Now that we have a new function and want to test for specific errors using their constructors, we need to extend the exports list. We add the new function, the inclusion error data type, the missing range part data type, and the inclusion mode data type. It's time to fix the test suite. We'll remove the qualified import of include code and import everything but the old include code function. Our test helper will use include code prime instead of include code and return an action of type IO of either inclusion error or block. All assertions now need to check for left or right results. We begin by expecting all cases to pass with the right values. A macro in NeoVim makes this process a little less painful. Checking the test runner output, the two cases failing before are now showing the difference between the expected right and the actual left. These cases should return left values, so let's change the first failing test and its description. We'll define the range helper function for this test suite to give us a range value given a line and a column. Note that this function is partial, but we can live with that in our test code. We need to import make range and from just.
We also need to enable overloaded strings to construct the text value for the snippet mode constructor. Now we only have one failing test case left. Converting it to expect an error would result in the same test we just wrote, so we'll just remove it. All tests pass and we're done. Remaining to be implemented in this Pandoc filter series is the number lines feature. Keep an eye out for the next video. <laughs>